So here we're going to look at our second part of cylinders and quadratic surfaces. So in this case, we're going to, I'm going to answer those, those uh, questions that I posed at the end of part one. So thanks again to everyone on Patreon who supports me, and also thanks to Wolfram Alpha for allowing, allowing me to use their graphs. So, okay, let's go down here. Okay, so let's skip through all of this. Let's go to our questions here. Okay. So we wanted to start off by sketching some cylinders. Then we wanted to uh, find some traces and use that to sketch. And lastly, we wanted to put some equations into standard form and classify. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same, the same technique that I used in part one to sketch these. So here in number one, I wanna sketch z equals four minus x squared. So that's what I'm going to uh, think about. What does this look like in two dimensions? And then I'm going to use that to produce my, my 3D graph because that's really what we're ult uh, ultimately interested in. Okay, so this is in terms of just Z and X. So here I've got my X axis and I've got my Z axis. Well, Z equals four minus X squared. That would just simply be a parabola it opens downwards, and that would correspond to z equals four. Here's x equals negative two, and x equals positive two. So you can imagine uh, the first one that I'm gonna graph, imagine that this is in that x, z plane. That's where I'm gonna graph this parabola. So again, forgive my rough graphs here. So there's that part, and then it just keeps going down. So that corresponds to z equals four. This would be x equals two. So I'm graphing this uh, right half of my parabola is what I'm doing in this case. And then, okay, let's go back. There's our negative x-axis. So that would, again, just go down and then keep going down. And that would correspond to the x value of negative two. And now what I would need to do is to just simply just imagine taking that, that graph that we have in that x, z plane and just infinitely moving it along the y-axis. It just keeps copying itself. So maybe I'll draw one more. So let's put another one maybe right here. So now we've got another parabola. So again, this would correspond to a height of, this would still be z equals four, that would be our height. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cylinder. And the idea is whatever variable is missing, in this case, there's no, there's no uh, variable y. So our rulings are going to be, those are gonna be parallel to the y axis. So let me try to connect these. So I'll try to make my rulings parallel to the y-axis. So the tops should definitely touch. And maybe I'll draw a couple more. So there we have some of these rulings. Okay, so that would be a rough sketch of this, this cylinder. So next we have x minus y squared equals zero. Well, I could write this as y squared equals x or y equals plus minus square root of x. So let me make this x, let me make this y. So there's positive square root of x, there is negative square root of x, and again, it's just a parabola that's been, uh, that's kind of laying on its side. Okay, so that's in the x, y plane. So now I wanna, whoops, now I want to make my parabola in the x, y plane. So. I always thought about these 3D graphs. I always thought about, you know, zero, zero, zero as kind of being like the corner of a room. So you can kind of imagine that X, Y plane as, as being the floor of the room. So I want my parabola to be sitting on the floor. So there's the positive square root of X. There's that negative square root of X. And again, notice there's no Z in this equation. So now I would just take that parabola and I would just, again, just, uh, just raise it and lower it along the z-axis, and it just keeps making copies of itself. So there's another one. There would be another one. And again, 
in this case, the rulings, the rulings are going to be our parallel to the Z axis. So let's try to draw a couple, a few rulings here. And again, you know, use some, uh, some software if you have access to it or a good graphing calculator to produce a, a better graph. But that would be a rough graph of our, our cylinder x minus y squared equals zero, again in three dimensions. Last but not least, we have z equals cosine of x. So this is very much like our first one. So there's x, there's z. So we know what uh, cosine of x looks like. It looks roughly like that. And of course, you could mark your units on the x-axis if you want to. So just like before, we had this graph in the uh, xz plane. This one is also going to be in the xz plane to get me started. So you can think about, you know, this portion. You can think about this portion corresponding to this portion. And now it's also going to go in the negative x direction. So there's our negative x-axis that extends backwards. So it's going to go down, down some more, and then back up. And then it'll keep going. And again, all I'm going to do now is just shift this graph along the y-axis to produce my cylinder. So maybe I'll try to draw one more little part so it goes down and then under and back up. And then the same thing, it goes down. Okay, so in this case, again, my rulings are gonna be parallel to that y-axis. So this is going to be up here at a height of z equals one, right? So that would correspond to z equals one. So if I connect the tops of these together, and maybe I'll connect a few more. So this graph kind of, you know, it looks like cosine. It kind of looks like a ribbon, right? That's uh, bending upwards and downwards. Again, where those rulings are parallel to the, to the y-axis. Okay, so again, that would be a rough sketch of our cylinder. Z equals cosine of x. Okay, so the next one, we want to find these traces. We want to find these traces of the surface x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared equals 4, and we want to sketch them. Okay, so let's think about what happens if x equals k. So in this case, I'm just simply going to replace, well, x with k. That would give me k squared plus 4y squared plus z squared equals 4, or equivalently, I would have 4y squared plus z squared equals four minus k squared. Notice this quantity on the left for any value of y and z. It's either gonna be zero or positive. So we do have to restrict our value on the right to be non-negative. And in that case, I could make that happen by saying the absolute value of k, that has to be less than or equal to uh, positive two for that to occur. Now, if we didn't have this coefficient, we would just simply have circles. But in this case, since this one has a coefficient of four and my variable, or my coefficient in front of z squared is not a four, these are simply gonna be ellipses. These are gonna be ellipses. So again, this is for when x equaled k. So it says x goes out to at most positive two, and it goes backwards out to negative two. Notice if we do the same thing, if we let z equal k, well, in that case, we would have x squared plus y squared, excuse me, plus 4y squared plus k squared. Or equivalently, we would have x squared plus 4y squared equals 4 minus, okay, we're replacing z with k, so that would be minus k squared. And same thing, the absolute value of k would have to be less than or equal to the 2. Again, these are ellipses. So it's going to go up to a height of positive 2 and at most down to negative two. And lastly, if we let y equal k, well, in this case, I would be left with x squared plus z squared on the left. And then I would have four minus four k squared on the right. So again, notice I'm just trying to keep my variables on one side and the other side, again, k is some fixed number. So we're just getting constants on the right in each case. 
Okay, so in this case, notice the coefficients on the x squared and the z squared are both 1. They're the same number. And in this case, we're going to get circles. And the radius in this case would be equal to the square root of 4 minus 4k squared. Now, notice the restriction here, the absolute value of k. Here, the absolute value of k will have to be less than or equal to 1 to keep this quantity on the right non-negative. So it says y at most goes out to 1 and out to negative 1. I am not going to try to draw this graph. But what you're going to get is you're going to get a nice little egg shape. You're going to get one of these uh, spheroids. Or let's see. And let's even go back and, and compare that to um, our form. They call it a spheroid. This is going to also, we called it an ellipsoid, okay? So this would be an example of an ellipsoid in this case. And notice we do have that, we could have put that into this form. Notice we have all of our variables, x squared, y squared, z squared. We've got some constant on the right. Um, so we could certainly put that equation into that form if we wanted to, to really recognize it. And again, I used Wolfram just to produce this graph. Okay, so number five, okay, I've already given it away here. We have an infinite elliptic cone. And let's again just go back and look at that form real quick to convince ourselves that is in fact what we have. So notice for one of these cones, notice, you know, we do have, everything's being divided by these random different constants, okay? But the thing I look at is one of, we have one of our variables squared on one side of the equation. And then we have the sum of the other two variables being squared. So z squared equals x squared plus y squared. And again, they can have some, you know, constants out front or, you know, in the denominator. That's still going to give you one of those infinite cones. Well, if we really want to put it in that form, let's do that. That shouldn't be too bad. So again, we had that form where we didn't have any of these coefficients. So what I could do in this case is I could take that. I could take that. And to get rid of the 2 and the 3 on the right side, I could divide everything by 6 or equivalently multiply both sides by 1 over 6. So I would have x squared over 6. And if I really want to put it in that form, I could write that as the square root of 6 squared. Well, we would have y squared over 3, or again, the square root of 3 squared, plus z squared over 2, or the square root of 2 squared, if we really want to put it in that form that we saw earlier. So we are getting this nice little cone. Okay, um, what's another thing? Okay, so one thing worth pointing out, too, in this case, notice the vertex is going to be at 0, 0, 0. We'll compare this to our next one as well. And notice the variable that's sort of alone on one side of the equation. That's going to be x. In that case, what happens is your cone is going to open up along a line that is parallel to the x-axis. In this case, since it's centered, its vertex is at 0, 0, 0, this is going to open up. So this is my words, not theirs. Open up along the x-axis. Okay. So again, I used Wolfram to produce this nice little, this nice little sketch. Okay, last but not least, x squared minus y squared plus z squared minus 4x minus 2y minus 2z plus 4 equals 0. Notice maybe one difference here is we have all of these linear terms, right? We've got this term involving x, y, and z. Well, we can still work with this, and I think I hinted in the first video. We're just going to use some completing the square. So I'm going to give myself a little space. This positive 4, I'm going to subtract that over, so I'll have a negative 4 on the... Um, the right side, so that takes care of my positive 4. I'm going to group these together. I've got x squared minus 4x, so that takes care of that term and the minus 4x. Now, I'm going to leave myself a little space because, again, I'm going to complete the square. I want the term, the, the coefficient on my square term inside of the parentheses to be positive. So with that in mind, I'm going to factor out this negative. So I've now got negative uh, the quantity y squared, 
Well, instead of negative 2y, I would need a positive 2y. And again, I'll leave myself a little space. And then we've still got positive z squared. Uh, let's see, minus 2z. Okay, a little bit of space. So again, just to refresh you, to complete the square, we look at our linear term in each set of parentheses, and we take one half of that value. We take one half of the coefficient. Um, so we'll take one half of negative four. That's just gonna be equal to negative two. And then we take that number and we square it. So in this case, I'm gonna get positive four. So if I were to remove that first set of parentheses, I would be adding four to the left side. So I've gotta add four to the right side as well. So I'll do the same thing. I'll take one half of positive two, that's one. One squared is plus one. But now if I were to remove the parentheses, right, we would actually be subtracting one from the left side. So I've got to subtract one from the right side. And lastly, if I take one half of negative two, that's negative one, negative one squared is positive one. Remove the parentheses, you're adding one. So I need to do that to the right side as well. So now I could rewrite this. I could write this as x minus two squared. Again, that's the whole point. We've completed the square. Minus, I could write this as minus y plus one squared. And then plus, it looks like z minus one squared. And notice on the right side, we'll just get zero. Well, I could rewrite this one more time. x minus two squared plus z minus one squared. And now I could add um, the quantity y plus one squared to both sides. Okie dokie, there it is. And again, notice we have this form much like we had a second ago, right? We've got a variable squared. And then on the other side, we have a sum of those other variables squared. Again, some, some constants are floating around. And in this case, okay, we've got some extra stuff in parentheses. But the idea is you're still getting a cone, you know, an infinite, an infinite cone. And in this case, it's center. Now it's not gonna be at zero, zero, zero like our other. We'll just take the opposite sign. You know, we see this negative two, negative one, and positive one. We're gonna take the opposite values. So it says with x, you had negative two. Well, we're gonna use positive two. Now let's be careful because our next one was z. So z was negative one inside the parentheses. Well, that's gonna to go to positive one. And we've got y plus one. Well, that's gonna to correspond to y equals negative one. That's gonna be our center, or again, our vertex. I've seen it called both in books. Okay, so there's our cone. So I've tried to go two units along the x direction one unit kind of backwards to the left for uh, y equals negative one, and then I've gone up one unit. So this is going to correspond to the point, this is the point two, negative one, one. Okay, so now it's not gonna open along the y-axis because it's not, the vertex isn't sitting on the y-axis. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna open along a line that's parallel to the y-axis. So that's gonna open along the line, the horizontal, the horizontal line when x equals two and z is up here at one. So again, I know my graph isn't gonna look good um, because I'm doing these by hand. So it should open up along this line. So this would correspond to the line, again, x equals two, and when you're at a height of z equals one. And that should be going through the center, but again, my artistry is poor. Um, should go through the center. Should go through the center. So that would be the idea if you did have a better graph. And this is one I actually did try to use Wolfram on as well. In the graph, uh, I wasn't quite happy with it. I think it's just more my limitations in using Wolfram. Uh, I'm still not, I don't use it all the time. But again, use some graphing software, use a good graphing calculator. Again, I strongly encourage you, if you are able to, not to graph these by hands, by your hand, by hand. So, okay, I hope these make sense. I hope they're not too terribly bad. As always, please feel free to like, um, subscribe if you haven't, check out some other videos. Um, if you do have questions, certainly feel free to post them. If I cannot help you, hopefully some other kind soul will see it and will point you in the right, right direction. So... All right, my friends, as always, thanks for watching, and I do hope this helps you.